house party, I jokingly said I cheated on him. He didn't take it as a joke and now wants a divorce. Hey, Reddit, I never thought a casual house party could turn my life upside down. But here I am, pouring my heart out after a joke turned into my literal nightmare. Let me share how a simple joke that I made in good faith is about to end my marriage. I'm honestly ranting on here because I have no idea about what to do. I'm so confused and I see this subreddit on social media a lot, so I think I could actually get some amazing advice from on here. I love my husband and want to save my marriage, so I'm going to give you guys a little backstory to this whole situation. My name is Chloe, I'm 24 years old. My husband's name is Timothy and he is also 24. We've been together since college, but we've only been married for a few months now. We live in the United States. I met him for the first time and I knew immediately that he was the one I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. He was charming, handsome, smart, everything I wanted in my dream man. We dated for a while before he finally popped the question, which was a few months ago. It was absolutely amazing. We went on our honeymoon and we just came back about, like I just said, a few months ago. I have always been a bit of a jokester and prankster and well, Timothy has always been more of a serious person. Timothy was always a bit, like I said before, overly serious. So I didn't think much of it because I understand that different people had different personalities in life. His seriousness meant he was a bold, driven individual who always got what he put his mind towards. He had a great career that he had worked hard on, and he was earning well. Our house was even a gift from his parents. I admired Timothy's dedication and ambition. He was the kind of person who set goals and achieved them, no matter the obstacles. It was one of the things that attracted me to him in the first place, the way he carried himself with such confidence and purpose. And as I mentioned earlier, Timothy's job allowed me to enjoy the role of being a somewhat stay-at-home wife. While I wouldn't strictly define myself as such because I did work, it was more of a part-time job at an art gallery. This job granted me a certain level of flexibility and freedom that I cherished. This balance between work and personal life kept me happy and satisfied. Though honestly, the pay wasn't great. It was okay for covering some expenses, but Timothy's job brought in the big bucks. The night of the incident is still pretty fresh in my mind, as it happened just a day ago. It was a typical Friday night, and Timothy, who was usually swamped with work, was surprisingly free for the weekend. We decided to kick off the weekend by attending a house party hosted by our mutual friends. The atmosphere at the party was lively, like I'm talking laughter, games, and plenty of drinks. We were all having a great time, enjoying each other's company and catching up on various topics. At one point, the conversation steered toward an ex-friend of ours who had recently cheated on her husband, leading to their divorce. This ex-friend had been cut off from our circle due to her behavior, so we found the situation somewhat amusing. In a light-hearted manner, one of my friends made a joke about how forgiving her husband would have been if she had been the one to cheat. Taking the joke further, I jokingly remarked that if I had been our ex-friend, my husband would never have discovered it. My husband then jokingly remarked that he would have discovered if I cheated. I then countered with another joke that he wouldn't have, and that I know this because I did cheat on him and he didn't find out. To my surprise, everyone except my husband joined in the laughter, finding the situation funny and taking it as a lighthearted joke. As the night went on, I couldn't shake this weird feeling about my husband. His mood completely shifted, and he went from laughing and chatting to being all quiet and distant. I could tell something was up, even though I was a bit tipsy. Nah. Normally, he's pretty good at hiding his feelings, especially around other people. But that night, he was like a closed book. He barely talked to me, and when he did, it was like pulling teeth to get a response out of him. I kept asking if he was okay, but he either brushed me off or snapped back with short answers. By the time we left the party and headed home, the tension between us was so evident. I tried one last time to check on him, and he just said, I'm fine, in a way that clearly meant he wasn't. It was obvious something was eating at him, but he wasn't ready to spill the beans just yet. After my husband's cold behavior at the party, I decided to give him some space and time to process whatever was bothering him. I knew from experience that pushing him to talk when he wasn't ready would only make things worse. So I focused on getting us home and settled in for the night. I cooked us dinner, hoping it would lighten the mood, but my husband barely touched his food. It was clear that something serious was on his mind and eventually he broached the subject. He asked me directly if I had really cheated on him. The question caught me off guard because the joke at the party was just that, a joke. However, I could understand his skepticism given our history. Back in college, at the start of our relationship, I made a mistake and cheated on him. That was because I didn't think we were that serious yet because we had just started dating. 
It was a rough patch in our relationship, but it still devastated him as he liked me a lot. I owned up to it, apologized sincerely, and promised it would never happen again. And it didn't. There was also the fact that before I came into his life, my husband had been through a lot of cheating in his previous relationships. It's like each time he trusted someone, they ended up breaking that trust by cheating on him. So when I mentioned cheating as a joke, it must have hit a nerve because he's been hurt so many times before. It's not just a fear. It's like a deep-seated trauma that makes him doubt things even when they're meant as harmless fun. So when my husband questioned me about the joke, I reassured him that I hadn't cheated on him this time either. I explained that it was all in jest and everyone at the party had laughed about it, but he wasn't convinced. He told me it didn't come across as a joke to him and that he didn't take it lightly. Yes, sir. I stood my ground, telling him straight up that I hadn't cheated since our early days together. I stressed how crucial trust was in our marriage and practically begged him to trust me. But no matter what I said, his doubts were hanging around him like a dark cloud. Then he asked to see my phone. That honestly made me feel so hurt. I felt angry and hurt, like he didn't trust me one bit. Asking to check my phone felt like he was prying into my private life, and I just couldn't bring myself to hand it over. It felt wrong, like he was crossing a line. At this point, I was on the verge of shouting and had gotten up from where I was sitting and even clutching my phone. Now that I even think about it, that must have made me seem even more suspicious. Throughout it all, he remained calm, almost too calm for such a tense situation. But like I said, he has always been an eerily calm person. Despite his calm demeanor, I stood firm and said no to his request. He insisted and I said no again. And then he just dropped it and said it was fine. And even when I tried to talk about it later, he brushed it off like it was no big deal. I woke up the next morning, my mind still reeling from the events of the previous night. There was this mix of anger, disappointment, and confusion swirling inside me, like a storm was brewing. It was Saturday, a day that we had promised to spend some quality time together since my husband rarely got weekends off. But after the tension and drama from last night, I wasn't sure if we would be able to enjoy that. As I tried to broach the subject of our plans for the day, hoping against hope that we could somehow patch things up, my husband dropped a bombshell on me. He wanted a divorce. It hit me like a ton of bricks, like literally knocked the wind out of me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He explained that he had spent the entire night wrestling with his thoughts, and he was unable to find peace, and his lack of trust had reached a breaking point. He seemed convinced that my casual joke about cheating had some hidden truth behind it, that I must have cheated on him at some point in the past. It was like a dagger through my heart. Tears welled up in my eyes and I just started crying because I honestly didn't know what to say. So just imagine me, tears rolling down my cheeks, utterly shocked and heartbroken by what my husband had just told me. I never expected a simple joke to lead to this. He looked at me with such sadness and guilt, and it tore me apart. He admitted that the joke had been eating away at him all night, and it had left him unable to shake off the doubt and insecurity. It was like a heavy weight on his shoulders that he couldn't bear anymore. Despite my pleas and offers to prove my faithfulness, he wanted a divorce. I was floored and still am. I begged him to reconsider, to give us another chance, but he seemed stubborn. I even suggested he could check my phone, but he refused. I suggested he put an air tag on me and still he refused. No matter how much I promised to change or offered solutions, he remained stubborn in his decision. In a last ditch effort, I suggested taking the day apart to clear our minds and think things through. Maybe some time alone would help us see things more clearly. But deep down, I fear that even this wouldn't mend this rift that has formed between us. So here I am right now, pouring my heart out to strangers on the internet. I honestly don't know what to do or what I should be doing. Any advice would be appreciated because at this point I need it. We were literally so happy yesterday. If I had known this was going to happen, I would have never made that joke, or I would have made sure that we skipped the house party altogether. But my mom always used to say that if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Like I mentioned before, any advice would honestly be appreciated. Thanks. Update. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me again. It's been a week and I'm back to update you on what's been happening. First off, I want to say thanks for all the advice and support I received after my last post. It's been a whirlwind to say the least. I did kind of make this post because I really needed a place to rant. And I thought I would get some really good advices here, which I did. But I honestly didn't think I would actually come back to update it. In fact, my account is in fact a throwaway account because I didn't intend on using it again, but I've been getting a lot of DMs on the account, and this post of mine really became popular, so I guess I'm going to have to update you guys. So there's that. And to reply to some comments that I just couldn't ignore, a lot of you kept asking me if I cheated, 
Like I said in my original post, no, I did not cheat. The only time I cheated was back in college and I owned up to it, so please stop asking me that. And please stop saying that I cheated or saying that you bet I cheated and that my husband must want a divorce because he found out I cheated. A lot of you all also said that I was hiding some details to make myself seem better and that what I posted couldn't honestly be the full story. I am not hiding any details. I wish I could say more, but there's nothing more to be said. That is literally everything that happened. What do y'all want to hear? Either way, so, after my husband dropped the whole ball that he wanted a divorce, we had a long, heartfelt conversation. I poured my heart out, trying to make him see that we could work through this, but he remained firm in his decision. It left me feeling lost and unsure of what to do next. I mentioned to him that therapy could be beneficial for both of us, especially considering his anxiety and our strained relationship. He agreed that therapy was something he needed, but he still wanted a divorce. It was a tough pill to swallow, knowing that he was set on ending our marriage. Many of you suggested couples counseling, and I brought that up to him. He said he would think about it, but his mind was still leaning towards divorce. Feeling desperate, I reached out to his mom, hoping she could talk some sense into him. Unfortunately, her response was less than helpful. She seemed to echo his sentiments, suggesting that if he wanted a divorce, maybe it was for the best. I was livid and ended up hanging up on her. I couldn't believe her lack of support and understanding, because what the absolute fuckery, we were so happy only a few days ago. What the fuck does she mean by if he wants a divorce, I should give it to him? I honestly hung up on her. I know she's going to complain to my husband that I was being very disrespectful, but I couldn't give two fucks about he because she's just crazy to be honest. On the brighter side, I called my parents and they were a lot more supportive. They emphasized the importance of therapy and counseling and pushed my husband to give it a try. After much discussion, we agreed that if therapy and counseling didn't improve our situation, we would go our separate ways. I also realized that I might need therapy for myself to navigate through this difficult time. It's been a really tough journey since our conversation about divorce. I managed to schedule a therapy appointment for us in two weeks, so now it's all about waiting and hoping for the best. I've been making an effort to be overly nice and generous to my husband, but it feels like he's emotionally checked out of our relationship. His kindness towards me feels more like how a close friend would treat another friend, and it's clear that he's guarding himself to avoid getting hurt again. The most heartbreaking part is the lack of intimacy between us. We still sleep in the same bed, but there's no physical closeness anymore. Whenever I try to initiate anything intimate, he freezes up and gently tells me that he's just not in the mood for it. It's a huge reminder of how much our relationship has changed and how distant we've become in such a short period of time. I understand his need to protect himself emotionally, especially after everything that's happened. But it's incredibly painful to feel this disconnect between us, to see him pull away when I reach out for closeness. I'm hoping that therapy will help us navigate through these issues and find a way to reconnect. But right now, it feels like we're drifting further apart each day. The kind words and advice from many of you have been a source of comfort, even though a lot of comments were harsh. I'll keep you all updated if there are any major developments. Thanks again for reading. Update. Hello, Reddit. It's been about three months since everything unfolded, and I should have updated you all sooner, but it's been a struggle. I appreciate all the support and messages I've received during this time. So let's get into the update. After our therapy sessions, which included individual therapy for both of us and couples counseling, it was pretty hard to fit all this into my husband's schedule considering how busy it is, but we kind of made it work. It became evident that my husband had emotionally checked out of our relationship. He was responsive to individual therapy and was making progress according to his therapist. But when it came to couples counseling, it felt like he wasn't fully invested. Despite knowing that I would be wrong, I checked his phone constantly until I moved out. I checked his laptop. I checked everything. I even checked the security cameras, and there was nothing and not even any deleted footage. I checked thoroughly and found no evidence of him cheating. He's not the type, and he's always been against infidelity. However, the emotional distance between us persisted, and we ultimately decided to part ways as we had previously agreed upon, so I'm now just waiting to get served. The process of moving out was tough. The house we lived in was in my husband's name and it was a gift from his parents, so I had to rely on my parents to help me pack and move out. Returning to my parents' home after thinking I had moved on is incredibly painful. I miss my husband deeply, and I regret the chain of events that led us here, especially that house party incident. I've been feeling incredibly sad lately. I miss him like crazy and find myself crying way too often. I'm trying my best to move on, but it's tough. 
What hurts even more is seeing him seem happier on social media. It makes me wonder if my nagging and complaining drove him away. I mean, I can be a bit of a complainer, I'll admit that. Scrolling through his posts, I can't help but think, is he happier without me bugging him? It's a gut-wrenching feeling. I question if I pushed him away with my constant need to vent and my frustrations over little things. Was I just too much for him to handle? But then I remind myself that social media isn't the whole story. It's just a highlight reel. Maybe he's putting on a happy face to hide his own pain. Maybe he's finding distractions to cope with the breakup. I have my moments of self-doubt, wondering if I'm to blame for everything falling apart. Relationships are complicated, and we all have our flaws. Maybe we both played a part in this. Despite it all, I'm trying to find peace and move forward. I hold on to memories and hope that one day the pain will ease. LOL, now I sound like a poet. For now, though, I'm taking it one day at a time, navigating through my mix of emotions and trying to find my way without him. Update. Hey Reddit, it's good to be back with an update. First off, I want to express my gratitude for all the support and love I've received since my last post. It's been overwhelming in the best way possible. Sure, there have been some harsh comments and people saying I deserved what happened, but those voices don't carry as much weight as the positive ones. The kindness and encouragement I've received, including the direct messages checking up on me, mean the world to me. It's been four months since my last update, and I feel like I owe you all a glimpse into what's been happening. Many of you suggested self-care activities and hobbies to help me cope with the pain, and I want to thank you sincerely for those suggestions. They've been incredibly helpful in navigating through this challenging time. One thing I'm grateful for is that nobody here is placing blame solely on my ex or me. The truth is, it wasn't solely his fault or mine. We both played a role, albeit unintentionally, in the circumstances that led to the end of our marriage. It's a realization that has brought some peace amidst the whole shitstorm. As for the legal aspects, we went through the court proceedings and thankfully it was a peaceful process. Given the short duration of our marriage, I didn't receive a substantial settlement, but I did get a reasonable amount of alimony. My ex didn't contest providing financial support, which I appreciate. It shows a level of respect and understanding despite the circumstances. What's surprising is how quickly our marriage came to an end, not even lasting a year. However, on a positive note, my ex and I are on good terms now. We're cordial, almost friends, and who knows, maybe there's potential for something positive in the future. It's a small ray of hope that I'm holding on to as I continue moving forward. Update. Hey Reddit, it's good to be back after quite some time, about a year and a few months to be exact. I log back into this account and it's interesting to see that there are still requests for an update. While there haven't been major events in my life, I do feel like I owe you all an update. And honestly, I've missed sharing my journey with you. First off, I no longer live with my parents. I've moved into an apartment and share it with a roommate. We weren't close friends before, but she's turned out to be kind and understanding, which I'm grateful for. Living with roommates can be tricky, but I lucked out with her, especially since I've heard some horror stories about bad roommates. On the work front, I had to take on a second job to supplement my income from my primary job. Like I think I've mentioned before, the pay wasn't great. I'm hopeful that I'll land a better job soon one that allows me to quit the second job and focus on a more stable career path. As for my relationship with my ex, we're still on very good terms. He's been supportive and helpful, and we recently had a deep conversation that was quite insightful. He mentioned that losing me was a catalyst for him to rediscover himself, and those words resonated with me deeply. Plus, they're the lyrics to that Selena Gomez song, LOL. It's a reminder of how challenges can lead to personal growth and self-discovery. Both my ex and I are currently single, and we're taking this time to focus on ourselves and our respective journeys. I want to express my gratitude to everyone here for their support and encouragement. Your words and insights have helped me navigate through difficult times, and I'm in a better place now, thanks to all of you.